Okay, we can't be sure, but there is some really uh, bad news <laughs> for a couple of assholes out there. Uh, first of all, Megan Kelly, who is pretty much, she, she sold her soul for the microphone, basically, or whatever, because I guess there is no microphone on the Today Show set. But in any case, it says here, this is the LA Times, the future of Megan Kelly's tumultuous and costly run at NBC News appear to be in doubt Thursday as she did not appear on her morning program, Megyn Kelly Today. Kelly's absence came a day after she apologized for her on-air comments about using blackface on Halloween. Given the circumstances, Megyn Kelly Today will be on tape the rest of the week, a network representative said in a statement. The abruptly scheduled rerun and announcement immediately led to speculation that Kelly is leaving NBC. Such an outcome would represent a spectacular flame out for one of TV news rising stars <laughs> and a humbling retreat for a network that spent heavily to lure Kelly from Fox News. But a representative for Kelly said she had not been contacted by NBC on Thursday. No one has told Ke Megan or her representative anything, said Davidson Golden, Kelly's spokesman. He added that Kelly's lawyer is scheduled to meet with NBC News executives on Friday to discuss her future. NBC News previously announced that Kelly would be part of the network's coverage of the midterm elections on November 6th, but the news division has not responded to queries. So the <coughs> the question is, who who are they going to shoehorn into that slot instead of her? Will it be Mr. Uh, Brian Williams, who still works at the net? You know, I think he works on MSNBC now, but the guy who basically uh, got booted from NBC for I think like six months for like suspended for lying about the helicopter trip or something. In recent weeks, NBC News executives and Kelly have been talking about ending her morning program and giving her a new role in hard news coverage. That prospect, however, appeared increasingly dim this week after her comments in which she questioned why the use of blackface on Halloween was inappropriate, generated a major backlash on social media, and anger among her NBC News colleagues. I, I bet most people, if they cared, they, they weren't really... Um, you know, it says here, NBC aggressively co covered Kelly's flame up on NBC Nightly News on Tuesday and again Wednesday on Today in a segment that was followed up with harsh condemnation from two of the program's African-American regulars, Al Roker and Craig Melvin. <coughs> NBC News chairman Andy Lack also criticized Kelly on Wednesday at a division-wide meeting that had been scheduled before the flare-up occurred. Even before the controversy, NBC News would have been hard-pressed to come up with a new position for Kelly that could justify her high salary. A show on MSNBC appears to be a non-starter. The cable news network is a favorite among politically progressive viewers who would likely balk at the addition of Kelly, who made her bones to the right leaning Fox News. Several people inside NBC who are not authorized to discuss the matter publicly believe that the Friday talks with Kelly are likely to center on how much money she will get to depart. Kelly has $48 million left on her three. So understand what that means. $48 million is, let me see. That would be nine, well, 48 divided by three. This is embarrassing. I think it's uh, $16 million a year. Yeah, it's $16 million a year. So... <laughs> She's making $16 million a year for that stupid show that only <coughs> dumbasses watch. The highest salary in television news, according to one person familiar with the situation. <coughs> Kelly's program has won kudos for providing a platform for many sexual harassment victims who came forward during the Me Too movement, including those who made, have made allegations against her former colleague Matt Lauer, the Fired Today co-anchor. To the consternation of her network bosses, Kelly called for an outside investigation of the company after NBC News issued an internal review that largely exonerated the network's executives' handling of their fallen stars' transgressions. So she, she's being – basically, this is, this is like basically lobsters eating each other alive or something. It's, it's, it's hilarious. She stabbed NBC in the back after they paid her all that money and, and, and she called for an external investigation. Now they're stabbing her in the back. The, uh, by the way, I mean, I, I think that, you know, I, I do think Craig Melvin is not, not as bad as some of the other news people, although I don't really watch the show anyway, so I'm probably wrong. 
But <laughs> I believe NBC put Melvin and Roker up to attacking Megyn Kelly in order for them to justify firing her. Uh, because then they could say, well, she has to work with these guys and they're not comfortable with her. So screw her. Screw her. I don't know what this midterm sale is, by the way. What are they selling? But Kelly's popularity at Fox News, where personalities can thrive with polarizing viewpoints, failed to connect. Okay, so Kelly joined NBC News in April 2017 after becoming a breakout star as a primetime host on Fox News, where she spent 12 years and demonstrated an independent streak among the mostly conservative lineup on the Rupert Murdoch-owned cable network. That was probably a put-on, complete put-on. Megyn Kelly is, is just as much of a corporate shill as any of the other people that were on Fox News or on MSNBC. Uh, you know, the, there were uh, – who else was the they, – they have Dennis Miller on. I, I don't really believe Dennis Miller half of the time I – you know, with all due respect to him, who is, sometimes he has some funny stuff. But I, I don't really believe that he's this conservative firebrand. It's, it, it's really it's – Fox News is kind of a joke network. Tucker Carlson's going around the country. He's having a lot of these interviews, which are good interviews. And <coughs> – I think he might be anticip if if those interviews are genuine. I think he might be anticipating leaving the network at a certain point because the rest of the network is just full of of uh, you know weirdos. Uh, even Sean Hannity, I think, is. I mean, what what the hell? Uh, th there is no. By the way, if you think I'm beating up on Fox News, I don't watch any of these network news programs. I probably watch more RT stuff and more stuff from from like all over the spectrum, like Reason TV, I was listening to something today, than I watch of any of these primetime networks. So, so, you know, Fox News, I don't like because of many of the same reasons I don't like CNN or, or MSNBC. And we will get to MSNBC soon. NBC News gave Kelly her own studio with a live audience for her 9 a.m. hour, which saw year-to-year -year rating losses of 26% of after... She took it, took it over. <coughs> so they're paying more money, but they're making less money. That really worked out. Tourists who showed up <coughs> each morning at Rockefeller Plaza in Manhattan with a 7 to 9 a.m. flagship Today Show pro Today program has a street-level studio, had to be induced with Starbucks gift cards and other giveaways to come watch Kelly's program. Publicists representing guests who appeared on Megyn Kelly Today were asked to bring people along to fill seats. What? So this, I think this is the entire, the entire media is basically stabbing Megyn Kelly in the back because they, they so I'll, I'll talk, I'll talk about what the real reason is for this in a minute. Before joining today, NBC gave Kelly a, a news magazine program that competed against CBS's 60 Minutes, but it was pulled after eight episodes in the summer of 2017 because it was terrible. Kelly's expected departure from NBC has raised speculation that she could return to Fox News, where she turned down an offer of $25 million a year before leaving. But Fox News has remained a dominant audience favorite since her departure and indicated there is no desire to have her back. We are extremely happy with our lineup, a Fox News representative said in a statement. So I would say I agree with Fox News, and I'll, I'll explain why. And, and this is right after I just trashed Fox News, so I recognize what, <coughs> what that means. There are some morons who will watch Fox News nonstop and they can't get enough. And, okay, that's that's fine because the, with all the other networks, there are parallel audiences. For and for CNN, it's a, it's a much smaller audience. And for MSNBC, it's a, actually a dumber audience than Fox News. And that's trying kind of hard. Okay, if, if you're a Fox News watcher right now, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch the network. I'm just saying... The network is full of crap. They have people like Shepard Smith on. Uh, who's who's that other moron that they have? That, that ridiculous morning program, The Five, uh, I think is, you know, if, if you watch that, I, I don't understand what type of person watches such, such like, banal, like, like, contrived humor. So, in any case, they don't have a problem, Fox, with getting people that will watch their shows, okay? Either way, whether you're a fan of Fox News or not, they will have somebody. There's plenty of people knocking on the door. Plenty, of, By the way, plenty of new talent that would settle for much less money than Megyn Kelly in order to, you know, break in and, and, and make some money. So <coughs> they've already adjusted to life after Megyn Kelly. 
Megyn Kelly hasn't adjusted to life after Fox News. And, and the reason that she left the network, I believe, is because at the end of the day, the, she didn't have any real convictions of, of any type, whether liberal or conservative, when she worked at Fox News. She was basically Bill O'Reilly's gopher. Some people would say gopher for something in his pants. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's conjecture, and I'm not going to say that it's true. But there, there's a lot of people who are asking the question, how did Megyn Kelly rise to the top in a network where, when, when uh, in many cases, uh, I think people were saying long before she left the network that, that she has no belief system that aligns her with Fox News. And I think Fox News is really cosmetic conservatism. It's not real. It's not a real philosophy. If you want to go for like actual conservative news, if you are a conservative, because I'm not, I don't fit myself into necessarily that camp for everything. But, you know, there's One America News. You have uh, Newsmax TV. Breitbart is a different stream of it. But, yeah, Fox News is, is, is kind of, um, you know, they're just corporate cosmetic people. <clears throat> and they had all that war on Christmas bull crap with, with Bill O'Reilly, which I, I will agree that there is a, a secularist tendency in the U.S. That is, that is destructive towards religion. But the way that Bill O'Reilly made it into a war on Christmas was uh, ridiculous. You know, if, if you don't want to shop at Starbucks because if you don't want to shop at Starbucks because of their stupid cups around Christmas, you shouldn't stop. <laughs> you shouldn't be shopping at Starbucks all year round. It's 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 stupid. And every year he would roll out the same bullshit every time. So what happened with Megyn Kelly was that she left the network because she thought at NBC News she would finally be able to spread her wings and become her own person. She would be, and, 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 you know, other people have talked about this. Lionel Nation, for example, on his network, on his uh, channel, network, on his YouTube channel, uh, when Megyn Kelly left NBC, he was talking about she wanted to become the new Barbara Walters, the new interview woman, the new, the new glamour lady, the, the person who would be looked up as, uh, as the, you know, the it girl of the media. And she wasn't that interview with Vladimir Putin was a complete flop. Every single, by the way, every single interview she did was, was just a complete disaster for her. And that's why they had to move her to the Today Show where they thought they should, they could minimize her damage. Uh, the Alex Jones interview was, was just a fiasco for her because of course he double crossed her because she was going to, she, she double crossed him and then he double crossed her because he recorded the entire interview. Then, by the way, so so then he, she gets to this position and she gets she's going to be probably fired. I don't think it's final, but she's going to be fired because of this blackface issue. Now, let me let me make it clear. I don't think blackface it should be. I don't think you should dress up in, in blackface. I think that there is a racial issue with it. But the idea that we're going to, you know, fire people over statements about it, over opinions concerning it. That is part of the whole policing of opinion. There's there's this Iowa, I think this is a news story, teacher. So I should have had this ready, but sorry. Um, yeah, this is from the New York Post. This is four hours ago. And this teacher is getting fired for a costume. If you remember the film Napoleon Dynamite, Kip, who's the brother Remember the brother in, in Napoleon Dynamite who's on the couch and he's like, your man goes to college. So his, his, so spoiler alert, not that it matters. Go watch the film, by the way. I like Napoleon Dynamite. I wish there had been a sequel. So he, he hooks up with this, um, I guess it was some sort of uh, long distance marriage site. And, and he marries this, this black woman from, from all, like across the country. And he lives in Iowa and her name was La Fonda. So they, they all made these Napoleon Dynamite themed <laughs> themed costumes. This is I don't remember what the name of the white girl with the stupid arts and crafts kit is, is what her name was. But it's the same. You know, the, the, this was I, I believe it was an innocent it was an innocent like thing. They weren't trying to be offensive to anybody. And uh, she's going to get fired for it. That, that's that's how ridiculous this is. Because nobody's nobody's going after any of these other people. They're they're in character. So I understand that it's not good for white people to, to 
dress up in blackface. I wouldn't do it. I don't think people should be fired, whether it's for talking about it and whether it's for discussing these issues with, with – um, or, or whether it is actually engaging in, in the behavior. You know, if, if that was the case, they should fire Jimmy Kimmel. Okay, what's his name? Uh, Mark Dice was talking about how Jimmy Kimmel actually did blackface on The Man Show as Carl Malone. This is that's a very famous clip. I'm not going to play it because there's a little more. There's not as much time. And it says here that Sinead O'Connor has has converted to Islam. What the fuck? So <laughs> I just noticed somebody familiar in the bottom of the screen, and I'm like, what? Sinead fucking O'Connor. Nothing compares to you. <laughs> oh, oh, dear prophet. <laughs> so then, who's the other person we're going to talk about today? It's Michael Avenatti, <laughs> and he's uh, he's in deep shit too, for a variety of reasons. First, there's there's uh this reason he's he's been fined four point five eight eight five million dollars for fa failing to pay a former colleague at his California law firm. Um. And it says he didn't fight back in court against the charges. This comes on the day, same day that Avenatti's firm was evicted from its Orange County offices for falling four months behind on rent. Okay, Michael Avenatti, and Orange County is expensive, man. <laughs> so Michael Avenatti, the attorney for porn star Stormy Daniels, was fined four, $4.85 million on Monday for failing to pay a former colleague at his California law firm on the same day that his firm was evicted from its Orange County offices in a separate trial. A Los Angeles court ruled that the firm Egan Avenatti owes Jason Frank and others, including the Internal Revenue Service, millions of dollars. Frank Avenatti's former colleague also won a $10 million judgment against the firm in a bankruptcy court case in May. Avenatti told the Los Angeles Times on Monday that he no longer owns Egan Avenatti, even though he recently told a bankruptcy court judge that his other firm, Avenatti and Associates, had taken on full equity of Egan Avenatti. So <coughs> who owns that firm? That's the real that that is a good question there. That is a good question. Notice what that says. I didn't notice this until now because I hadn't read through I I'd actually seen this story somewhere else, and this is the first time I'm reading it here. Avenatti told the Los Angeles Times on Monday that he no longer owns Egan Avenatti, even though he recently told a bankruptcy court that his other firm, Avenatti & Associates, had taken on full equity of Egan Avenatti. He also told reporters on Monday that Frank instead owed him millions for fraud he committed. Avenatti hasn't pursued any legal case against Frank's alleged wrongdoing. So I'll say what, what I think might be the real truth behind this. Avenatti doesn't own his other law firm either. His other law firm is basically a shell comp company owned by somebody else, and he's basically a puppet of somebody much bigger and much more uh, well-funded in order to continue to spark the, these controversies. And that's that's the truth. It's not. It has nothing to do, in my opinion, with uh, you know the, 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 these firms have his name, but he's basically an employee, in my opinion. He's he's the front. That's what that's the truth with Michael Avenatti, if, if I'm reading this correctly. So it says here, any judgment issued against me will be deducted from, deducted from the over $12 million that Jason Frank owes me and my law firm Avenatti and Associates as a result of his fraud, Avenatti told the Times. Avenatti didn't appear in court or file any opposing briefs in, this, in the case. In the trial involving his firm's office space, the building owner held that Avenatti did not pay $213,254 in rent over the last four months for its suite in an office building. So that's about $50,000, yeah, 50, $53,000 a month in rent for its suite in an office building at Fashion Island in Newport Beach. Avenatti says that he deducted the cost of repairs to the office from his rent, even though his contract stipulates the tenants are not allowed to reduce their rent by making un unapproved repairs. Avenatti's landlord told the Times that the firm paid its $52,235 July rent, but that check bounced. Okay. Um, so that that's it with uh, him. Or is it? Or is it? So... New questions <laughs> raised about Avenatti claims regarding Kavanaugh. 
So the long and the short of it, because we are running a little long, is that there was a second accuser. This is Julie Swetnick, by the way. Let's see if we can hear some of this. From Today, the Dr. White House Bush. authorized the FBI to expand its investigation into sexual misconduct allegations against Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Two accusers, Dr. Christine Ford and Deborah, uh, excuse me, Deborah Ramirez, have talked to the FBI as part of this probe. Now, a third who came forward recently, Julie Swetnick, so that's fast forward. Was to possibly becoming the next Supreme Court justice. I just want to get the timeline right about this because mm -hmm. he was nominated in July. Christine Ford, Dr. Christine Blasey mm -hmm. Ford, came forward in the Washington Post mm -hmm. more recently in September. Mm -hmm. So was it in September that you? Uh, it's it's been about a, this? it's been several weeks, but I'm not somebody who follows the news. I'm not political at all. Julie Swetnick says she was in community. So it doesn't have anything to do with politics. Everybody knew that this was going on. This was the, the news made sure that people knew about the whole Kavanaugh bullshit. OK, and this is this is more this is people who, you know, they, they should know better than to fool, fool the, the country. OK, when asked in the phone. Inter so there was a second accuser besides a woman over here, Julie Swetnick, who had come forward and talk to Avenatti. And it says, in the second statement, the unidentified woman said she witnessed Kavanaugh spike the punch at high school parties in order to sexually take advantage of girls. But less than 48 hours before Avenatti released her sworn statement on Twitter, the same woman told NBC News a different story. <coughs> Referring to Kavanaugh spiking the punch, I didn't ever think it was Brett, the woman said to reporters in a Phone interview arranged by Avenatti on September 30th after repeated requests to speak with other witnesses who might corroborate Swetnick's claims. As, as soon as the call began, the woman said she never met Swetnick in high school and never saw her at parties and had only become friends with her when they were both in their 30s. When asked in the phone interview if she ever witnessed Kavanaugh act inappropriately towards the girls, the woman replied, no. She did, she did describe a, a culture of heavy drinking in high school that she took part in and said Kavanaugh and his friend Mark Judge were part of that group. In a statement Thursday about his referral of Swetnick and Ab so so this this indicates that we don't even know if Swetnick was there. And it's possible, it's possible, I would say that this woman had talked to Swetnick at one point about Kavanaugh and how much he was drinking in high school. And Swetnick decided to jump on the bandwagon and claim that she'd been there. In a statement Thursday about his referral of Swetnick and Avenatti for a criminal investigation, Krause said, when a well-meaning citizen comes forward with information relevant to the committee's work, I take it seriously. But in the heat of partisan moments, some try, do try to knowingly mislead the committee. That's unfair to my colleagues, the nominees, and other, others providing information who are seeking the truth. Avenatti responded in a statement to NBC News saying, Senator Grassley has just made a major mistake let the investigation into Kavanaugh and his lies begin. Kavanaugh and Judge denied the allegations leveled by Swetnick and other women. Avenatti asked about the inconsistencies with the second woman's account, said it is a sworn declaration that she read and signed and repeatedly stood behind. According to the second woman's declaration that Avenatti provided to the Senate Judiciary Committee, she said, during the years 1981 to 82, I witnessed firsthand Brett Kavanaugh together with others spike the punch at house parties I attended with quaaludes and or grain alcohol. I understood this was being done for the purpose of making girls more likely to engage in sexual acts and less likely to say no. <coughs> the statement also said that Kavanaugh was overly aggressive and verbally abusive to, to girls. This conduct included inappropriate physical contact with girls of a sexual nature, but reached by phone independently from Avenatti on October 3rd, the woman said she only skimmed the declaration. After reviewing the statement, she wrote in a text on October 4th to NBC News, it is incorrect that I saw Brett spike the punch. I didn't see anyone spike the punch. I was very clear with Michael Avenatti from day one. When asked about the abusive behavior towards girls, she wrote in a text, I would not ever allow anyone to be abusive in my presence, male or female. Shortly after tweeting out the woman's allegations on October 2nd, Avenatti confirmed to NBC News that it was the same woman interviewed by phone on, October, on September 30th. But when questioned on October 3rd about the discrepancies between what she said in the phone interview and the sworn and the serious allegations in the sworn declaration, Avenatti said he was disgusted with NBC News. At one point in an apparent effort to thwart the reporting process, he added in, in the phone call, 
How about this? On background, it's not the same woman. What are you going to do with that? After NBC News, so he, he, he decided to backtrack and say, well, it's not the same woman. So what are you going to do about it? After NBC News review, received text messages from the woman refuting some of the claims in the declaration, NBC reached out again to Avenatti, who defended the declaration. I have no idea what you were talking about, he said in the text. I have a signed declaration that states otherwise with multiple audio recordings where she stated exactly what is in the declaration. There were also multiple witnesses to our discussions. He sent a follow-up message moments later. I just confirmed with her yet again that everything in the declaration is true and correct, Avenatti said. She must have been confused by her question. Uh, roughly five minutes later, the woman sent a formally worded text backing Avenatti. Please understand that everything in the declaration is true and you should not contact me anymore regarding this issue, the text read. But when reached by phone minutes later, the woman again insisted that she never saw Kavanaugh spike, punch, or act inappropriately toward women. She said she's been consistent in what she told she's told Michael. Could this have been a phone hack? I don't know if there's a way to hack somebody's phone so you can send text messages from it. In a subsequent test, text on October 5th, she wrote, I will definitely talk to you again and no longer have a natty. I do not like that he twisted my words. And this is from two female reporters. Okay, and they, they made it clear by that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, these are, you know, they're, they're reporters. I, I mean, they, they have to give their whole fucking story, but, but whatever. This is, this is, I believe... The beginning of the end for Avenatti. But Chris Saliza says, he just says, can we slow our roll on Michael Avenatti? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get too excited about him. He says, of late, that, that, that uh, everywhere you turn at Michael Avenatti is there. Of late, that's turning into not, not such a good thing for the celebrity lawyer turned 2020 presidential aspirant. A brief review of Avenatti's recent problems includes Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley referred Avenatti and his client Julie Swetnick, who uh, alleged that Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh attended a party where she was drugged and gang raped to the Justice Department for possible criminal investigation Thursday. Grassley charged that Swetnick and Avenatti lied to committee investigators looking into the allegations against Kavanaugh. Avenatti denied that he or, or Swetnick misled investigation, investigators. In a Time Magazine profile <coughs> on him, Avenatti said that he believed that it had better be a white male running against President Donald Trump in 2020. Avenatti told CNN that he had been misquoted in the take out of context. For the record, I think Time Magazine is owned by the same company as CNN, if I'm not mistaken. A California judge ruled earlier this week that Avenatti <laughs> had to pay almost $5 million to make good on a debt he owed to his former law partner. Avenatti responded by saying that his ex-partner owes him even more money. The Daily Beast published a piece suggesting that Avenatti has personally owed more than a million dollars in unpaid personal taxes. Avenatti referred to the story as a hit piece. Well, I mean, <laughs> he would know since he's the he's basically been engaged in one long hit piece since last year. You get the idea. Bad story gets published. Avenatti says story isn't true. Rinse, repeat. Avenatti cast himself as the sort of guy that Democrats need to nominate in 2020 against Trump, someone willing to say and do whatever it takes to beat Trump. I think the party has yearned for a fighter, a fighter for good, if you will, for a significant period of time, he said during a visit to Iowa recently. And for many, I'm probably seen as that individual. One person who agrees is former Trump White House political advisor Steve Bannon. Avenatti's got a fearlessness, Bannon told HBO's Bill Maher, and he's a fighter. I think he'll go through a lot of that field if he decides to stick with it like a side through get grass. I mean, maybe this is Saliza talking. He says it's possible that Avenatti like Trump is like Trump, completely immune to stories that would destroy other candidates. But remember that Trump was a famous fighter for decades prior to his running for president. People have long had hard and fast opinions about him. Avenatti, on the other hand, is a newly minted celebrity with less imprint on the public. The point Avenatti could be a political unicorn like Trump, and even if not, he's not, he has lots of time to make up for a tough few weeks. But let's not crown Avenatti king or even prince of anything just yet. This is this is ridiculous. This is why CNN is a shit network. This is why you know it's impossible. Look at the top. They have they have a whole section that's called 45, just about Donald. They don't they don't put Donald Trump. They put the the number of his you know what what number president he is. And yet they're considering this guy, Michael Avenatti, who has judgments against him in court. 
Okay, he can appeal, but there's judgments against him in court relating to personal debts that he owes that are are, are pro would probably be crippling to any other person that have bankrupted his firm, including ones that they, they didn't mention the issue of his back rent. There's also the issue of Avenatti having, um, you know, the, the 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 lawsuit was tossed, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, or might, might have been just last week, the, the, the Stormy Daniels lawsuit against Trump for slander when he called her a liar. So that, that suit's been tossed, and, and he, you know, she has to pay attorney fees now. So everybody talking about how Stormy Daniels and whatever, that's going to be the, destroying Trump. Remember, she already has one strike against her in that respect. <coughs> what, what's she going to, is she going to fight on, on uh, you know, are people going to bail her out of that? Because she's already wasted a lot of money anyway. And now she has to pay his fees. So, so basically, it's a losing prospect. It's it's a money pit. The Stormy Daniels thing. So, so what all the Avenatti's managed to do over all this time is to waste other people's money on a lawsuit that that had virtually no merit. And that's that's basically the story of his life. That that what what Chris Saliza is making the case for is the Democrats nominating uh, a hack attorney. Uh, what do you call it? A shyster. Okay, Michael Avenatti is a dirty lawyer. That's that's the only thing. That's that's the appeal that the Democrats. So the Democrats are going to run him against. You know, forget about Donald Trump. Running him against anyone, the guy would would look like a complete and utter joke. Uh, and but maybe that's the whole point. Uh, anyway, that's about it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, or subscribe to my other channel, Razor Ray Live Wounds. Uh, share this video and comment when it uploads. And also contribute to my Patreon if you can. And have a great night.